Hello and welcome to 100 Days of Code in Python, written by Bob Belderbos, Julian Sequeira, and myself, Michael Kennedy. Maybe you're wondering, what is this hashtag 100 Days of Code? You've probably seen it all over social media. In fact, it's really, really taken off and people are finding this concept of 100 Days of Code really powerful for getting them to focus over a long time to actually get over the hump and become capable developers, or maybe learn a new language like, say, Python. Here's an example of what you might see on Twitter. Renee Sanchez says, day 11, hashtag 100 days of code progress. Today I worked some more on byte 18. Find the most common word from codechallenge.es slash bytes. This code challenge platform they're referring to is actually from your co-authors, Bob and Julian. We'll talk more about that later. Let's look at one more. Amit Kumar says, hashtag day 32, another Auto Web Compat PR, pull request, just got merged. Way to go, Python, TK Enter, 100 days of code. So he added some new feature or bug fix to Auto Web Compat. Very, very cool. So you've seen this stuff probably all over social media, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. What's it about? Well, this is actually a very structured project put together by this guy, Alexander Calloway. So Alexander, he was studying in business school, but also wanted to learn programming and he was having a hard time making progress. So he came up with this idea of 100 days of code. Here's a quote from him. The idea of hashtag 100 days of code originally came from my personal frustration with my inability to consistently learn to code after work. I'd find other less involved activities to spend my time on, like binge watching a TV series. One of those days I was sitting in the restaurant with my wife, Anna, sharing my frustrations with her. I suggested maybe I should make a public commitment to learning for at least an hour every day. And I thought I would go for three months, but it turned out 100 days was the right one. How about that? Well, thank you for creating this project, Alexander. This is really a great thing for many people getting started. And this is what this course is all about. We are going to give you lessons and exercises for every one of these 100 days. We're going to cover so much content in this course. It's going to be amazing. You'll learn many, many different things over these hundred days of code. In fact, there's so many, I can't really enumerate all of them. It'll just take too long, but I do want to give you a quick sampling of what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about collections, lists, dictionaries, working with them. We're going to test our code with PyTest to make sure we build reliable apps. We're going to create games, Dungeons and Dragons style with classes and inheritance and object oriented programming. We're going to deal with errors and proper error handling in Python. We'll do logging to keep a history of what our application has done. We're going to work with the popular exchange format called JSON. And it's a really great way to exchange data between Python applications and any web service. Speaking of services, we're going to learn how to call JSON based web services from Python. And if there's no service, you can still go to the website and do web scraping. You can turn any HTML page, anything on the internet into a data source using web scraping. Another source that we might go and consume, RSS feeds, really popular among blogs and podcasts, but also other types of subscriptions. We're going to use the Twitter and the GitHub API to interact with those services automatically from Python. Want to send an email? Maybe a new user registered for your site? Well, we'll see how to do that as well in this course. Excel has got to be the most popular database in the world. It's not really a database, but people use it like one, and you may need to program against it. Turns out we have the trick for you right here. Want to automate something on the web? Go log in here, navigate over there, click this button, make that thing happen. We'll see how to do that with something called Selenium. You want to write a web application? Well, we'll do that with something called Flask. It's probably the easiest way to write a web app in Python. SQLite is a database built into Python. It's what's called an embedded database. And you'll see how to program it either directly or from what's called an ORM, from SQL Alchemy, where you create these classes and you map them to objects in your database. So we'll have a couple of way, places where we talk about SQLite and relational data. Graphs are wonderful. They explain so many things. And so we're going to use something called Plotly and draw graphs for you based on a set of data that you have. And typically when you're doing science-like stuff like this, that's done in something called Jupyter Scientific Notebooks. And a good portion of this class will be presented in these notebooks. Not all of it, maybe about a quarter. GUIs and Python, they typically don't go together. But in this course, they do. You'll see in just a few lines of code that we can create a really powerful and cool GUI or desktop application, and this will run on all the platforms, Windows, 
Linux, and Mac OS. And finally, it's fun to consume APIs, but sometimes you want to build them. So we're gonna actually take Flask and extend it to create our very own API and put that out on the internet. This is a ton of stuff, right? Isn't this exciting? Well, it's only a small part of what we're gonna cover in this course, so I hope you're really excited. Bob, Julian, and I definitely are excited to teach it to you, so let's get to it. You've chosen Python for your 100 days of code. Maybe you're a Python developer who has lots of experience. You just want to go through this whole challenge, and that's great. You probably already know the power and popularity of Python. But if you're just getting into programming, and you're coming here and say, well, let's try Python for this 100 days, that seems like a great way. I want to tell you, you have chosen wisely. So check out this graphic. This comes from one of the best sources on the internet for popularity and adoption of technology, Stack Overflow. And the data scientists at Stack Overflow did some predictions and said, well, how are the various languages doing over time? Are they becoming more popular, less popular, based on their view into the industry? And they did this up to mid-2017, and then you can see the gray part where they're projecting out. One of these languages is unlike the others. It is just going up and up and increasingly up. Your other best bet is JavaScript, which is barely logarithmically going up. Java looks like it's topping off. The rest of them are going down. So if you're going to focus on something, pick one particular language. Pick the one that's got all the momentum and the popularity behind it, and that's Python. Now, you might say, okay, Michael, this actually is against all these older languages, C Sharp, Java, and so on. What about the new languages like Go and Rust? They're probably even more amazing and more powerful and growing quicker. Well, let's see. Yeah, they're growing up. They're going upward, not downward. That's really great. Swift is going up. TypeScript's going up. Go is going up. But they are nowhere near Python in this graph. I just want to leave you with these two pictures in your mind that Python is really a great place to put your energy and be learning. My rough rule of thumb here is I would like to bet my career on things that are going up, not down. So which one of these do you want to pick? Well, you're in a good place. When you dedicate yourself to taking a course and carefully working the way that the instructor or the author is working, you're effectively gaining much of the experience that that particular author or developer has gained through their career, through their jobs. This course is special because it's taught by three people. That means you get three experiences in one, and this is super valuable. Imagine that you have a job at this place. You get to work with cool VR gear and on hardware and IoT things. You'll gain one set of experiences. But if you took a different job, Say you're starting a fashion startup with your friend, this woman from college, and you're just working on this coffee shop, being scrappy, working, trying to get venture capital and, and launch your application. You have a totally different experience than this dude in a VR headset. Or maybe you go the corporate route, work at Microsoft like this guy here. He's you know working on some new programming language tooling around Python. These are all super different experiences. And these experiences are very positive. They give you a different perspective and more perspectives on programming. That's awesome. How's that relevant to this course? Well, with the three instructors, we each have a slightly different set of tools and a slightly different way of working. We're going to show you next how each of us gets set up, what you need to follow along with each of us, Julian, Bob, and myself, during our particular segments. You don't have to work like us, but if you want to do exactly what we're doing, we'll show you how we got started. And we feel this is super valuable for you. You'll have not just one experience, but three experiences kind of bundled up into one. And so on the other side of this course, you're going to have a broader perspective. And that's pretty awesome.